And this, mo this morning, we especially welcome uh, other reference, uh, Sharon Solomons in, in, uh, as our guest preacher today. Uh, is Sharon with us, Wendy? Uh, welcome, uh, Sharon. And, and Sharon and I just celebrated a, a uh, uh, anniversary of ordinations together. We were ordained on, on the uh, Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, December the 8th, 19th years ago. That was so long ago now, it seems like. So uh, welcome to the third Sunday of Advent service as uh, part of our pilgrimage to us uh, Christmas, the Nativity of Christ. Um, let us just take a few deep breaths, especially for those who are worshiping in person sometimes, to remind us even wearing a mask doesn't uh, stop the Holy Spirit to enter and fill us through the mass because um, the risen Christ is beyond any form of barriers. So um, let us um, prepare ourselves and vow. We have beautiful prelude from vow. Upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. Our processional hymn is hymn 91 in your hymn book, People Look East, the time is near.
in this time and place, we gathered out on the unceded ancestral lands of the Skarmish and Seashawk nations. From many places and peoples, we come to this house of prayer. In this time and place, we await the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. Come, Christ come. In this time and place, we await God's transformations of the world. Maranatha, come, Christ come. In this time and place, we await the coming of the commonwealth of peace. Maranatha, come, Christ come. In this time and place, we commit ourselves to the work with Christ that all these things may be accomplished. In the name of God, the source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, and when he comes, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for, for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. Excuse me. <laughs> On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt you over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so, so that you shall not bear reproach for it. I shall deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. 
at that time I shall bring home you at that time I shall bring you home at the time when I gather you for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before you before your eyes says the Lord hear what the spirit is saying to the church and we will read the canticle, the song of thanksgiving, all together. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy I will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say on that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud, O loyal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is hymn 105, When Jordan Cuts the Wilderness.
Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Clarence, for that warm welcome and uh, congratulations to you too on your anniversary, 19th anniversary to the priesthood. You bunch of snakes. This is the greeting of John the Baptist to those who come to see him desiring to be baptized. The version that Steve just read actually uses the phrase, you brood of vipers. Either way, I'm not sure how well that would go over if your clergy greeted visitors to the next baptism service in that way. Last week, we heard John the Baptist's message of preparing the way for the one who is to come. And this morning, we hear his message of judgment and call to repentance. One of the themes of Advent is indeed repentance. This is the part of what we do to prepare for the celebration of God coming among us. It used to be that repentance was a major focus of Advent. And this is why there used to be the color purple on the altar frontals and the Advent candles. Purple, the color also used in Lent, is seen as a penitential color, signifying the themes of repentance and confession. In recent decades, there's been a shift to the color blue for Advent. This blue is meant to reflect the color of the sky in the morning just before sunrise, a deep, rich blue. It is the last color the eye sees before the light returns. The blue of Advent then is meant to symbolize the hope and expectation, which are also important themes of the season. Today, however, is the one Sunday in Advent where we do get a heavy dose of that theme of repentance. John the Baptist's words to the 
crowd are full of judgment and condemnation. John is challenging the integrity of the people who come to be baptized or to witness the baptism of Jesus. You bunch of snakes, who warned you to run from the coming judgment? He sees through their motives. He believes they have no intention of repenting, but they just think that by getting baptized, they will, in a sense, be covering their bases, you know, just in case. The kind of preaching that we hear in today's gospel reading from John is the one that many of us cringe about. The way he calls them out so harshly. We Ang Anglicans tend to pride ourselves that we don't generally hear hellfire and damnation from the pulpit. We actively strive to be gentler, to be inclusive and accepting of all without the harsh judgment that many Christians are known for. We also deeply want to avoid a reputation of being the kind of Christian that judges. And there is certainly good reason we have moved past the laying of guilt trips that some of us have grown up with. There is good reason that we hear God's call of love, God's call to be inclusive and accepting of all. But this does not mean that we do not need to hear God's judgment. It does not mean that we do not need to take time to sort the wheat and the chaff within ourselves. That we don't need to regularly examine our own lives to see where we are driven by ego or by our own insecurities. But also to see where we can be more centered in God's love and how we can strive to do better. Self examination and penitence are important to Advent. However, if we take another look at the gospel reading, we can see that John's chastising words are more than words of judgment. They are also words of invitation. Whenever repentance and forgiveness are available, judgment is good news. When all there is is judgment and blame, we will naturally look for an escape route. But when there is grace and mercy offered, judgment is the first step towards transformation, to know that we are given another chance. This is indeed good news and does give us hope. It offers a glimmer of possibility that even when we cannot undo the past, that we can have a better future. Even more than that, when we are forgiven, when we know we are forgiven, when we are blessed with grace and mercy, instead of shame and punishment, there is trust placed within us that transformation is possible. God forgives us because God looks at the deepest, darkest guilt inside of us and knows and believes that we can be so much better. This then is cause for rejoicing. For judgment from God is not about punishment. Judgment from God calls us to be accountable, to be honest with ourselves and with one another, to take responsibility for our actions, and to also know that we are called into new life, into a new day. And John the Baptist is calling people into a new day as well. He isn't one to mince words for sure, but he calls the people to live with integrity. And we as the church are also called to live this way of life, to hold one another accountable and to call each other to live in, with integrity, but always, always in the spirit of grace, trusting and believing that change is possible. The fascinating thing I think about today's gospel reading from John the ba about John the Baptist is the fact that he, although he attacks the crowd for their lack of integrity, their response is not one of defensiveness or avoidance or trying to attack him back. They don't try to pass the buck. They have also heard the call to a new day. And the response from the crowd instead is a question. What should we do? How do we live into this new life? 
How do we truly repent and change our ways? And John's response is simple. Be compassionate. He gives three examples of compassion. Share what you have with the poor. Be fair and honest in all your dealings. And do not take advantage of others. It can just be summed up in that word, be compassionate. Have care for others. There's been a movement in, within Christian churches that some call the emerging church. The current century we are living in will no doubt see much change in the way the church lives out its calling in the world. One of the writers who speaks of the emerging church is Episcopalian Diana Butler Bass. Several years ago, she wrote a book describing a research project she undertook looking at a variety of churches in the United States. In her research, she discovered that those churches who focus their energy on issues of justice within their own communities also discovered their compassion grew. When they put their energy into addressing poverty and racism and oppression, they also began to focus on accountability and integrity among themselves. Out of this, they actually found within their own community, they became less judgmental rather than more. One woman shared her experience with the author of coming back to church. After I came back to church, I felt my life was changing. I felt more compassion for others. Before, I used to judge people, especially those who I saw as wealthy or successful, because I felt like I didn't fit in. But now I love everyone. Working towards justice in our communities, according to Butler Bass, is one of the signposts of an emerging church in our century. People who are looking for places where they can make a difference in the world without the kind of blame and shaming that we see so much in the world around us. Another sign of this emerging church, stated by Diana Butler Bass, is the area of discernment. Churches that are growing, that are both increasing numbers, but also increasing their quality of community, the churches that are seen as relevant today are churches that pay attention in some way to the spiritual practice of discernment. That is an intentional practice of discernment as a kind of spiritual compass, helping us to negotiate the unfamiliar territory of our true selves as we seek to find meaning to God's call. This kind of discernment involves intentional reflection, both as individuals and as a community, on the questions, who am I? Who are we as St. Bart's of Gibson's? What is God calling me to do? What is God calling this parish to do and to be at this time in our lives? Discernment is a practice that intentionally seeks to sort out the wheat from the chaff. What is the stuff that gets in the way? What is the stuff that takes up time and energy but really isn't important? And where are the kernels of wheat? The kernels of true value that need to be nurtured. Again, both within each of us individually, but also within this community. Where are those kernels of true value? And how can we nurture them? These are the kinds of questions that John the Baptist is addressing as well. The invitation to new life through baptism always begins with getting real and honest about ourselves. John the Baptist challenges us to God's judgment. One who is more powerful than I is coming, who will clear the threshing floor, gather the wheat and burn the chaff. There is in fact joy here. 
Joy that we can be seen for who we truly are as beloved of God. And that we can be called towards integrity and compassion and called towards new life. And so as we draw nearer to the celebration of the incarnation, the birth of the Christ child, we are reminded that Jesus is the one we follow, the one we seek to model our lives upon, to live with compassion, to do justice, to do our small bit in our small corner of the world, trusting we can do so because God, the holy and beloved one, will continue to lead and guide us, loving us just as we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we stand, let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all people as they work and witness in your world. May those who lead nations of the world be given wisdom. Unite us in your truth and love and help us to show your love to others. God, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us and ask that you guide us all to share in these gifts. We thank you for the beauty of this community we are privileged to call home. We pray for our families and friends and ask your guidance to love and help each other as you love and help us. We thank you for this community of faith that supports and equips us to serve as your disciples. In our prayers this week, we ask for God's wisdom, mercy, and the healing strength of the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon Archbishop Linda, Bishop John, priest in charge Stephen, assistant priest Clarence, Deacon Steve, and our guest, Reverend Sharon Salomons. In our diocese, we remember the clergy and people of the Deanery of Royal City and the Deanery of Point Grey. In our Sunshine Coast faith community, we remember the clergy and people of Holy Family Roman Catholic Church, Seashelt, and St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church, Gibsons. We pray God's blessing be upon all in our parish, parish, remembering this week in particular Jack and Sheila Carlson, Joan Carnaby, Barb Catnat, Mary Chambers, and Penny Connell. We pray for those who are facing particular health or spiritual challenges. Brett, Norm Cupid, Sarah, Rita Greenlaw, Pamela McEachran, Gerald, Mark, and David, Kay Jack, Willa Johnson, Rosemary Johnson Fay, Margaret Rowe, Marilyn McGoran, Reverend Esther North, Ken Peterson, Joan Richter, Jerry Roper, Warren Saul, Randy Shepherd, Julie Skippen, Pat Skippen. We pray for physical and spiritual strength for all those in care at Christensen, Totem, Green Court, Shorncliffe, and Seashelt Hospital. Father of all, we pray that you welcome into the company of angels the soul of your good and faithful servant, Pat Edwards, late of this parish, and pour out comfort and healing for the family and circle of friends now mourning her passing. Grant unto Pat eternal rest, and may light perpetual shine upon her. Welcome also the soul of your servant, Reg De Dennis, and may his wife, Kristen, sons Howden and Kieran, and all his family and friends find comfort in their faith that he now resides free of pain with you and all the saints. Grant unto Reg eternal rest and may light perpetual shine upon him. Hear our humble prayer that we may serve you in holiness and faith and give voice to your presence among us until the day of the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confidence in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another and those who are at home with a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Our overture hymn is hymn 60, I Come With Joy. Let us pray. God of hope, renew in us the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. It is right to offer thanks and praise. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betrayed us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injured others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak, 
and those broken and alone whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels and ancestors forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carry them home. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine. At the right time you send your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you this gift, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore, we proclaim our hope singing. Sing this again and learn this and sing this well. Dying you destroy our death. Rising you restore our life. Lord, Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord, 
Pour out your spirit on this gift, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by sufferings, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all na life, now and forever. gathering our prayers and praises into one let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with unending joy, and prepare us for the birthday of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scattered the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our concluding um, recessional hymn is, uh, is a fun one. Um, you, you can move and dance along if you like, and we're going to sing it at least three times with increasing tempo. Um, uh, come and praise 104, joy shall come. My sisters and brothers, in this season of Advent, let us go in peace. Amen. Amen. We, go we go in the name, name of Christ. Christ.